Good day and welcome to your favorite sport program on TV Plus Sport. My name is Muda Shibushitu and today will be an interesting moment on the show. If you want to be part of the show, you can join us on all our social media platforms to enjoy this wonderful moment on the show. We have a special guest, someone who has done so well for the development of sport in Nigeria and Africa, a linguistic, talking about Dr. Martins Morgan, who is a sports um, administrator. <laughs> It's good to have you on the show, Dr. Martin Morgan. Yeah, Muda, good morning. Uh, how are you? I can hear you now. Yeah, we are fine. Let, let's go straight to what happened on the 13th of um, October um, from, uh, for the Super Eagles that um, a value jet um, boarded plane, um, chartered plane, took place, um, took departed Victor Atta International Stadium in Akwaibom and landed in um, Kanu, Aminu Kanu Stadium for a refuel. From there, the next stage, the next um, departure was leading them to Libya, and this has been the reason why Nigerians have been talking so much about um, the almost um, 17 hours hostage by the Libyan Football Federation um, against um, the Super Eagles, and the reason why that happened has been still been point of um, contention. Though CAF have um, said uh, putting that team together for the investigative team to really know what happened at that place. And also, authorities have been lashing out at each other who is at fault and who is not at fault. But we are looking at um, what really went on on that particular day. You've been um, a very important um, person when it comes to sport issues in Nigeria, Dr. Martin Moga. What's your perspective about the incident? Well, for me, I, I think uh, the whole thing has been very, very unfortunate for African football. And it's a sad moment in the sense that uh, it's one of the experiences we never wish any other African club to experience in Africa when we are playing amongst ourselves. Well, what, the, what happened in uh, Libya for me, I look at it at in the three dimensions. One, diverting that plane from original Benghazi that was to be the landing point where they have all the authority to, to land authorization, sorry, and uh, force the pilot to divert to Al Barak Airport. In that aspect, I look at it as a hijacking. The hijacking, you are putting all the players and the crew members at risk because uh, we were made to understand authoritatively that the pilot was saying that he had the authority that he should divert the plane, or otherwise they will land it from a higher authority. Two, getting to Al Barak, which was just an abandoned airport without landing navigational facility, no AR fuel, and no other instruments that will help the plane to land. The pilot just used his own experience as a Tunisian that who said he has already flew into that airport some, some years ago to land. That was a very high risk. And landing there also in that Al Barak, very unconducive and abandoned airport, they were uh, held in within, block up all the paradise kidnapping. Then, if you look at the other third angle, which I'm looking at it, keeping them hostage, no water, no food, no connectivity, even the sanitary conditions on those toilets, there are no water. That is hostage taking. So, if you put all those three perspectives, into coloration is an act of terrorism. For just what reason? It's better known for the authorities because if they say they have a higher authority, from the highest authority to divert the plane, for me, it's not the best for us. And at this point in time, it's not telling good. And making them to start, they should truck by road, very unconducive uh, carrier on the bus, almost how many kilometers by road. Anything can happen between that place to Benghazi and to Damina. But they will not tell you that, yes, they were, God forbid, they were attacked by unknown gunmen. And this is how it is. And for me, it's very sad. Like I keep on saying, those, that act is so to, to ter uh, terrorism. You and I know that the Maghreb have a lot of uh, all this type of uh, nebulous act of doing their own host to their host when it comes to football. The CAF have continued to align those things to go on for the number of years. They were unable to do anything. 
So for me, I think uh, my first blame goes to CAF to align them to even play, play to even allow Libya that don't have good facility to be hosting this game. The second blame for me goes to what we perceive as being a brotherhood, but there's no anything like brotherhood. Then the other angle for me, I look at it, is that Libya should be charged for international terrorism. For me, this there's no other colorification you can put because the safety of those players, the safety of the career were all at risk. Even for them to get fuel to, to, to leave, after spending almost 20 hours, it was so much refuel, they had to take a high authority. So the other bad idea I have is that they were not well treated in Nigeria again. For me, I take it with a grain of salt because when you are playing in another game, a away game, you inform your host ahead of time when to come. But they went their own way, informed late, and made the arrangement with their embassy here, and they landed in Boracot, and they got their own way to move to uh, Uyo. So if they have a breakdown of vehicle on the road, that is, shouldn't be because it was an independent approach that you are taking. Then going back to what happened in Libya, for me, like I said, if I have a way, I would have broken diplomatic or suspend diplomatic ties with Libya. Nigeria would have suspended their diplomatic ties with Libya. Somebody would just tell me, that, like I was saying in another forum, somebody would say, what about the illegal immigrant Nigerians we have up and down? That is very, at that point, it's not, it's not too much important, but let's deal with the matters on the ground. It's not encouraging. It's sad. And uh, subjecting to that level, for me, it's not the best. So, CAP telling me we are investigating. The official complaints have been made by NFF to CAF and the rest. But now CAF said it's, they are yet to receive an official complaint from uh, Libya as later. So we thank CAF one word the other for delisting that matter and putting it for another day, which is not yet confirmed. So, but all the totality of it is not football in Africa. It's not helping us. It's like people are still living in jungle. Jungle. So, what if you look at that perspective? If I want to expand further, what tells you that this Nigerian player wouldn't have been poisoned? Hmm. So, this is the question we should be able to find out. That, that's you, you, very um, Dr. Martin, it's, you mentioned something critical, and. Um, which is something, I don't know, because maybe because it's, which is something we've not heard um, on trending, is the fact that you said that um, the Libya got into the country in the first leg by themselves without contacting the Nigerian Football Federation. They made the logistic by themselves. How, how, true, how true is that? They contacted late, according to what we have from the Director of Information, Mr. Lajiri. But then by the time they were not contacting, they said they were already heading to Libya. So, uh, to Horakot, even at Paracot, fly your aircraft to Uyo. They say, no, they can't pay ad additional costs as related. So it's an orchestrated thing to ensure that whatever they are going to do, they will have a, an alibi to play it back and Nigeria. But they play to the airstream, which you and I know that. I'm sorry to say that the Maghreb countries, most of them, when I mean the Maghreb, the North African country, they are racist. I have experienced racism in some of their countries. Even that's in Libya, in Tripoli. I've experienced it. I've experienced it in Cairo. So I am telling you that this, if you have a transit point, they maltreat you. They don't want to see blacks. I think that is what has got into their DNA. I don't have apology to any person. Libya presented or projected an act of terrorism, which you should be charged for and which I think the Nigerian government should not take it with levity. It shouldn't be our usual noise, gra, gra, gra. We do the noise and we don't follow up. Even there's not going to be any sanctions and financial payment by the Libyan government. Libya should be suspended from some of these international games. And Nigeria should suspend, I keep on repeating, her diplomatic ties with Libya. What are we getting from Libya? Yeah, well, well, well sir. Well, sir, so what do you think yeah. should be calf stands on this international standard code tells you that there must be sanction there must be penalties suspend the country from further international game for a number of period and address and investigate what really went wrong hmm. so when you have those four elements that either financial sanction infrastructure in terms of suspending them from the game 
and uh, giving other diplomatic time. So the same thing CAF is doing. It's the same thing even the, the continental body, which is the African Union, should also do hmm. to Libya. That's the way we look at it. So okay. there's no need of embellishing this thing. Okay. There's nothing footballing, there's nothing sport in what happened. The least thing you can do to anybody, give him water. Water is the least thing by international standard. Water is the least thing you can give to any captive. In fact, that is the right word. They were captives. Hmm. That is why I gave it a three dimension. Hmm. Hijacking that plane, diverting it is hijack, which is an against international norms. For an aircraft carrying passengers that have authorization to pass through the pathway and land. Two, keeping them in a closed environment, locking up the keys and the rest. It's kidnapping. Number hmm. three, refusing and denying their food, subjecting them to inhuman treatment is hostage. So to conclude that that is an act of terrorism, by international standard, by UN standard, there's no way you can define terrorism by putting fears. Because at that moment, if there was a fragile one, like uh, uh, the goalkeeper, Maduka, who was trembling, they would start vomiting, and somebody can pass out psychologically. And at the same time, you even bring your national television to come and crew, to come and film them, mockery to the nation. So you want to make them caricature. So it's against, it's very inhuman treatment. There's no words you will use to classify this as friendship. There's no element of friendship. For me, I declare Libya as enemies and war, a uh, force to the nation. You should break that diplomatic ties with them. Okay. You, 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 are, you are speaking so tough, and that's the same tone the Minister of um, Sport, John Ennon, in the video we're about to play right now. When we come back, we'll analyze that video. But in that video, he was speaking tough just the way you are speaking tough. I mean, Nigerians should listen to what the Sport Minister has to say on this. And when we come back, we have you to analyze in-depthly about his speech on what went on. Again, this morning, I was in a conference call with the President of CAF and the Secretary General of CAF. And I tried to employ them that they, should, they have to work with Nigeria, you know, to see that what is the most important thing is not, you know, going to go and play a match tomorrow, you know, in which case, the, you know, nobody can guarantee the safety. I mean, I put it to CAF that if from yesterday for about 17 hours, CAF hasn't been able to directly relate with the Libyan Football Federation, what guarantees can CAF make that the team can be safe, even if they were in a psychological state? to still be part of them. But so that's where we are. As of the last time I tried to follow up, I mean, they were, you know, they had reached, you know, in the morning they were trying to see how they can get aviation fuel. You know, most of the documentation, you know, for the airline was, had already been concluded. So our hope is that, you know, this kind, you know, this kind of gory, you know, situation, this kind of, I mean, it's an um, unfortunate situation, you know, been brought, you know, to an end. And, but having said so, I've also, you know, put it to CAF, that there must be an adverse consequence, you know, upon you know, you know, the Libyan Football Federation, and you cannot achieve that. Because again, this morning I was in a conference call. That's um, the sport minister on um, what has to do with issues ongoing um, right now because they have no financial decision by um, CAF on that. Um, we still have Dr. Martin Morgan with us. Um, what, what can you take out of um, the sport minister's speech on that? Yes, in fact, I don't expect anything less than that. Because uh, we, you and I, when it's up, we can see that the whole country was on their feet. We are not talking about the game again. It's no longer football. This is terrorism. Hmm. And we should be treated as such. Because CAF himself, as I told you many times that I don't believe so much in CAF. Hmm. CAF knows, they know that the North African country have this penchant. Or uh, antics. So for this, antics. Uh, penchant for this, um, I don't know what, the nefarious antics yes. that they use against their visitors. Ask any player, ask anybody who has go, been to those countries in any game. And then they keep on aligning to go and they become like a status quo for these Maghreb countries. And no sanctions have been done up to date to tomorrow. They keep on telling that the North African countries are hosting sports and they are developing stuff. What sort of sport are they developing? Hmm. Where you give a gory sight to your, your visitors. Is that what we are talking about the charter in Africa unity? 
Well, don't you think we need to well, be well. careful, Dr. Martin Morgan? Don't you think we need to be careful to think what takes place in what took place in Libya is the same thing we should be expect is a similar thing that will happen in Morocco, Algeria, or Egypt? I, I, I use my I mark my words. I say Maghreb. Hmm. I say Maghreb countries. They have that penchant of doing that. I I told you what I saw. In that Tripoli, came in with Africa, I was going to N'Djamena, uh, uh, stopover. They matrix you with a lot of, maybe because you are black. Cairo, which is hosting CAF headquarters. The same thing they will treat you. We need taxi man will look at you this day. Morocco, why well, you argue for me that when Morocco tried to be a little bit Libra because of the tourism in their uh, uh, how do I call it? Promoting in Marrakesh and, uh, and, and, and Rabat and the rest. But then at the same time, even within the fold, you still feel that air. Eh, the Arabs don't believe that the blacks are human beings. Hmm. They treat the blacks like slaves. They are not too, there's no coloration in this thing, uh, Muda. The Arabs, the North African country, they don't even look at themselves as Africans. That is why they travel to most of African countries with their food. Hmm. So having all these diplomatic uh, embassies and the rest, why why are they not been able to say that yes, let us promote that friendliness of African comradeship? Africans are very warm people. Honestly, I'm telling you, they are more racist than uh, Eastern Europe. That's what I'm saying. So for what the question you ask, Morocco, they are hosting a cup of nation and they are hosting sport. I am very certain that well, it's going to be. A of, uh, a, an assembly of different countries, they may end up being a little bit careful and pretend to be your brother keepers and direct. Go and see what they are maltreating our, our people to catch when they are trying to cross the desert. But there's, so there's something, like that. There's something <laughs> that, that, that I, I don't know, we need to emphasize. Some said reports still subject under review and order that Ghana didn't have the same treatment. Ghana have been there before, other countries have been there before. But didn't get the same treatment. I don't know how true that is. Did you hear anything so close to that? Well, I was told that they didn't have that treatment, but that is not the issue. An injury for one is an injury for all. That's what the Charter of Africa Unity said. And we are still maintaining that charter in that form. So if you treat me as a Nigerian for whatever reason, wrongly, like they used to, even South Africans, and you are not treating the Ghanaian the other. So it's a total disdain. I think it's high time. The Okomati, uh, sorry, the AAU, I mean, we are talking, who are the highest contributors? I mean, Nigerians contributing for a lot. I think it is high time we have to now embolish and launder our image to the point that, uh, like the former former foreign affairs minister, Joe Garba, said, all these banana countries should not be using us and, uh, and treat us with disdain. What if the sport minister said, if I'm in position, that is what I would say. Hmm. But the only thing he didn't say, is the ties because it's a government official. But for me, I say let's suspend the diplomatic ties with Libya for now. Hmm. I know there are we have some citizens who are already in various prisons. They are they call them slave, mal, uh, 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 maltreating them like any other one. Like we see the they recommend their spirit. That's international organization of migration. They will tell you what some of these Africans are suffering. The sub-Saharan Africans are suffering in the hands of these Maghreb countries. Hmm. So it's it's you know. <laughs> well, I can see that. My, I am getting very angry. Yeah, I can, I can <laughs> see that. And it's, um, it's, um, it, it's something very unusual about you. But this situation is getting a lot of Nigerians emotional. Yes. Some are, but yes. a lot of people are also careful. But I've seen it. I'm, I've experienced it, but my own not on direct because I have other coverage. But the way they look at you is this day. That's why I'm using the word this day. But we are, we are in Cairo. You see it. You've talked about Tripoli. We also understand that one has to be careful because of... And the crisis we're having Africa, and money for the uh, North African countries. What are we having from them? We also have to be careful because we know a lot of Nigerians that travels to Europe illegally. Why uh, must they go there illegitimately by road? Why must you go across the desert and uh, across the sea? Why must you do that? And there are many of them in jail. They are maltreating and they said they like sell slave and the rest. We can't continue. We can't continue like that. But the, like I was saying that same day, 
Uh, I was chatting with uh, somebody who was there. I don't want to mention the name. Maybe okay. you, you have the information. I know. I know you know. I was telling well, somebody. The concern here is that we should consider about the players and the crew that mm. left. Mm. Let's ensure that in, in that crew we have a lot of notable that. people. We have also the yes. I think um, I think should I quote him? Quote or quote? I think the high court has still retained him as the deputy governor of um, Edo State, Philip Shuaibu. Um, was in that yeah. delegate and orders, 22 players, and um, it was something close to horror. But what uh, we also have information that uh, perhaps the game has been shifted to um, next good. year. We are not so sure about that. Um, but a lot of people are not happy about calf stand on this issue based on the fact that they should have been more outspoken than just saying that they've not um, received any letter from any one of the party. What, well, let's also look at that calf stands critically well uh dr mosepe the current calf president though he will have brought a lot of reforms but i can tell you when it comes to north african country calf become a two-class bulldog oh, why is that so? so what uh, they they have this uh i don't know affinity or patient uh don't uh, uh, sentiment about most of the North African countries. I don't know why. Hmm. But my happiness is that it's, it's neither Morocco nor Tunisia nor talkless of Egypt. But who, te, who why do you, how am I sure that can, those countries cannot do that to any other country from, from some, uh, down uh, South, South Africa? Who told that it cannot be done to somewhere from Semak or Cameroon? So, so uh, this is an issue you are talking about. So you have a proper sanction. Even if we seen and putting this the flashlight on your face when you are playing with them in their stadium, should we stop? That same Benghazi. We know the couple of nations that uh the the, the, the Ghana won or something. We know what what, what they suffer from years in, in, in those areas. That same Benghazi. They they are not good, they are not good hosts. Also, yeah, we also have pictures. We also have pictures. Um, I don't think we have it right now, but the picture you probably have seen um, on social media about the Libyan team sitting on the floor, waiting for delegates, waiting for that. Are you saying we should discard everything that has to do with all what the Libyan national team have said with regards to our own treatment for them? And from of the from the, from one of the former players who now plays in Turkey said professionally in Turkey said that um, it's because um, the, the Libyan side don't have a social media impact. That is why the world did not know what Nigerians, the Super um, NFF did to um, the Libya FA and the players when they came to Nigeria. Um, I, I, because I also saw a picture of them sitting uh, perhaps somewhere it looks, that looks like an airport. I don't know whether it's the Nigerian and a Nigerian airport or so. Are we saying we should discard everything the Libyan side says about their own treatment when they were in Nigeria? Yeah. They, 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 we cannot disregard totally. But what I know that, like I said, I use one word an orchestrated scheme. You guys say you are arriving. When they keep on asking, when are you coming? You say you let people know, you let you know, you let you know. Two hours or three hours to that, you now you found that you're already here, but whereas you're already descending in uh, Poracourt. But Poracourt was not the venue you have your clearance to land. How did you get your clearance to land in Poracourt instead of uh, you went the match venue? Those are some of these questions we need to ask, even our officials. Honestly, we need to ask even our officials. Agree, they landed in Poracourt. If they landed in Poracourt, like we were meant to understand, they were trying to get some officials from Enugu to go and meet them and bosses and the rest. That also tells you about an element of ineptitude in the time of administration we have. Okay, Dr. Matt in Logan. Yeah, well, well sir, sorry to cut you short, but we need to let our viewers to watch what um, the Tunisian pilot said when he was diverted, that the diversion came from an IA authority. So let's, give, authority. Um, let, let's give this um, a pleasure um, for our viewers across the globe to watch what the Tunisia um, pilot said on that. What was the point of uh, arrival? Uh, the flight plan was uh, to land uh, as destination uh, Benghazi, Benina, but unfortunately, and we got the approval from uh, the Libyan Civil Aviation Authority that we are approved to land in Benghazi, 
but unfortunately, when we start descent, they asked us to divert to uh, Nabrik, which is at uh, almost uh, 150 miles, that is 300 kilometers uh, around uh, uh, more far, but it's at the east. So it was, uh, it wasn't uh, our even our alternate. Uh, something which is not good because uh, in aviation we have our flight plan we calculate the fuel to our destination so we have to avoid uh, this kind of thing because it may uh, uh, make the bridge to uh, safety and uh, when I insist to land in uh, Benghazi according to my flight plan and according to my authorization they said no uh, it's uh, from the highest authority, you have to land in uh, Labrad uh, Baida. So, uh, the Libyans are saying that it was your discretion to land in No, no, no. no. Everything is uh, easily registered. In aviation, we cannot, we cannot hide anything. So, I asked them several times, at least eight times, and I warned them, probably I will be in trouble uh, for uh, fuel. They said it's from highest authority. You cannot land in uh, Benghazi. You have to divert immediately to uh, Labrador. Thank God we uh, make it safely and we landed safe in uh, the other airport. In the event that your company is asked to provide evidence, safe in uh, the other airport. In the event that your company is asked to provide evidence, will you be able to appeal? Yes, yes. yes all, the, all, the, all the evidences are, uh, are in uh, all is documented in aviation. We cannot hide anything. This is our flight plan. Uh, so we cannot say uh, something which is not wrong because there is a lot of cross-check and the lot of redundancy in language. So they cannot uh, hide this information or uh, say uh, other than the truth. The truth was he was uh, going to uh, Benghazi I, and I can show you also the evidence of uh, the approval. I have it. So after that, they changed their mind, and uh, at the last minute, they changed the airport. Even the uh, airport was not it's like a domestic airport. It's not. Uh, it's not well equipped. There is no INS, no air approach, no uh, VR. So we make it visually. Uh, to be able to land because in case of going around you cannot go anywhere. So it was uh, our first and last chance. I, I hear that uh, you've been in that area before. That problem yes. Have to... yes. Uh, thank God I worked there for two years uh, with a uh, changing uh, company. So I know the area very well and it was not an easy matter at all. Thank you very much for talking so, to you. When a pilot will hear to me, he will, he will understand that it was not an easy, an easy thing to land by night, vision approach, with marginal weather, without ILS, without air nav approach, and without VOR. Thank you very much. Thank you. At um, the pilot that um, was in charge, the captain, uh, took um, that flight from, um, uh, from um, Kanu in Lagos and landed to um, and got to Libya. Unfortunately, as what he was giving about what went on, that the whole thing started from um, from an IA authority. And we now go back to the in-depth analysis. Still talking about the super eagles, um, Dr. Martin Morgan. What can you say in regards to what the captain just spoke now? Well, I, why I term him the traditional captain, the pilot days? Why I term him as a hero? Hmm. Because uh, without him, 
when they were not diverting that fuel and that proper, anything can happen. Because a landing and airport without a navigational facility, a navigational facility. Two, they have been able to tell you that they have this plan, the flight schedule, uh, the, the, uh, the flight plan from point A and not to point B with, with all the authorization. And how it was not time to argue with them, they say, no, we cannot land. And they say from a higher authority several times. So when they ask him, can you be able to have the evidence and the witness? He say yes, but he knows what happened. So from that analysis, he's telling you that this is no longer football. That's my position. Hmm. It's no longer football. And this is a, an Arab, with due respect, a Tunisian. He's not telling you that he has a plan. I had a speaking in Arab. Hmm. You are understood it, not English. Hmm. Just as some of these things we need to take into cause. You know, he showed you the flight plan, the schedule and the authorization. He showed you, he talked talk about the fuel. He mentioned it there. The 300 kilometers they were to get. He mentioned about the challenges involved. But because if you have refused at that moment, and decided to continue the flight point to Benghazi, it would have been brought down. Hmm. Brought down means he has refused to take order from the control tower, so he has entered into that airspace illegally. Hmm. If that was what they were expecting him to do, so they would have an opportunity to bring that plane down. Then the next thing would just cry and say, God is there. Hmm. That's why I say I make him my hero because they diverted that flight, hmm. and that is a hijacking. Still on CAF because CAF will still speak on this, and you've mentioned what you expect them from CAF. But obviously, um, what does the table looks like now? After that game, we saw um, we won that defeating Bene. That makes us top of the lock table. And how optimistic are we right now in the mini games? We are very optimistic for me. We are very optimistic. Whether their game comes uh, on or not, we are very optimistic. But I will be totally disappointed if up to now we are yet to have a concrete plan or a concrete statement for the organizer, which is CAF. By now, CAF should have been able to invite the federations for an emergency meeting either in Cairo or anywhere, let's look at this issue that transpired. CAF is still letting you, but we have executive members of CAF, it's an uh, opinion major. It's a loan for us, there's nothing you can do. I don't have confidence in CAF, but I believe we should come up with this thing. Just like that picture you were talking about, uh, how they were sitting down, their boss break down, and they were sitting down the snap picture. It was the NFL that caused it. <laughs> yeah. It's but, during the Libyan embassy. So the Libyan embassy too would have to by now the Libyan ambassador to Nigeria should have been recalled who they will recall our own. If possible, declare him personal non grata. Hmm. I think yes. I think that's why football football that should be a unifying factor for nations, for countries, for community. That's why um, African has shown the world what football should not be like. And then uh, for CAF to know that they are, I believe it was to be FIFA, they should have done better than that. Or uh, what's your opinion? Well, possible. Or maybe the European countries possible. among themselves. Right, that tells you that that is why we have this issue of regional blocking in Africa. When, it does, when it's regional blocking, it affects with certain decisions we take in CAF as a regard to African football. It's not today, I keep on repeating, that the migrant countries are harassing even club sites coming to play in their country. It's not today. And they want to use it and ask for cheap points by telling them that we walk over. It's not today. So what have we have been doing since then that we are unable to address? Hmm. That's true. Maybe when it happened to the Bafana Bafana, the CAF president, we will have been able to understand that this is what you would have done. I am sorry, I'm not too. I need to be very objective in this decision taking. Hmm. I think FIFA will have done better. But I hope CAF2 will be studying the two sides, even studying, listening also to the Libyan angle of the story. 
that they were maltreated. When they were maltreated, we didn't direct their plane to Port Harcourt. They landed in Port Harcourt on their own volition. Not that they wanted to land at you, the air control tower, and say, no, land in Port Harcourt. Muda, are you seeing the difference? There's a difference in that thing. There's a difference. Different. Yes. I've quoted you the international norm. There are almost five reasons why you can divert an, an, an aircraft on a path. Technical reason, a medical, emergency, riot, airspace closure in the country. So those are the carrier faulting for backup. Even, even the alternate airport given to them was not even close to Al-Barak where they diverted the plane from. So if that man have lost, uh, lost his country, what would he be saying? If I'm, sure, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, it's, 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 um, people, people have been saying so much. But one thing we also now we should expect the country to take more drastic decision after Kappa That's what I'm taking... saying. Yes, we should take decision. It's no longer. It has got into a diplomatic. But level. I think I think and, they have to be diplomatic about it because we have a lot of Nigerians in Libya. There should not be a repercussion of. Um... There been suffering in Libya for long. It's not going to be new thing. <laughs> there have been suffering in Libya. So why did they go by Libya to uh, by road? They will tell you because the economy is harsh and this and that. No, we should be able to look at certain things, and we need to even change our behavior internally and understand that. The way you, we, we parcel ourselves, that is how that gives us our, we need to learn that our image. Now, perhaps, now, it, looking at the lock table, the Libya team seems to be, have nothing to lose because they are at the bottom of the lock table. They are at the bottom of the lock, so they just want to get that three points by cook or whatever it is, or share it. No, it cannot happen, it shouldn't happen. So let them bring the fact, the pilot is the hero, he's going to be a principal witness because he flew it. So if they bring their own pilot, they bring their charter aircraft from a, uh, Tripoli to uh, Paracord, who forced him to go and land there. And what was his clearance? Then we need to also bring the Nigerian officials on the aircraft. Speak, still speaking with um, Dr. Martin Morgan, uh, giving us his in depth analysis on the ordeal between the super egos of Nigeria and um, the, like, the Libya counterpart that took place. Um, on the 13th stroke, 14th of October, there's been so much um, to talk about. I'm sure technical issues is one of the reasons why we are not being a we will not be able to continue hearing from um, Dr. Morgan, but we hope that um, we can see talk to him. Dr. Martin Morgan, are you still there? Okay, if you're just joining us, it's been tremendous time, tremendous time with um, Dr. Martin uh, Morgan telling us about um, what the in-depth analysis of um, the Super Eagles ordeal in Libya. We also heard um, the Sport Minister John Enon rejecting CAFA appeal on um, this um, incident. Um, we also heard the interview, one of the journalists doing that ordeal in Tripoli said um, about um, how the chartered flight was um, diverted, that it was diversion was as a result of um, higher authorities, as the word he used, and he was negotiating to divert to, to land to where it had been described on paper. We saw him try to show us um, the, the, the documentation of the flight. So it's been a bad one. And we still expect CAF to stick him out and stand on all that, the diplomatic issues. Oh, Dr. Martin also expect that the Nigerian government should take more directed step regards to what will be the outcome of CAF um, decision. And that's all on that. Um, uh, we're about to round up the program, but I would like you to know that um, in Adida, Adidas Baba, Adida Babas in Ethiopia, where the 2024 um, ITF African Championship is going on, we had um, Nigeria winning the men's team event. Um, not so good is the fact that um, Auno Kodri has withdrawn from that tournament, the men's singles. So we don't have him out now representing Nigeria because of injuries. And also reports that he has many international commitments to make. And he, for injuries sake, he has to just um, withdraw. Nigeria won the men's team. Egypt won the women's team event. Nigeria defeated um, Algeria in the final of the men's team that gave us that gold medal. But the women's team lost to the Egypt counterpart. Uh, um, there's also, we know, also know that the Egyptian men team were not in this tournament. 
but good one for Nigeria with defeating the Algeria team. So we had um, Aouna Kodri, uh, Martin Taiwo, not Martin Taiwo, talking about um, Matikuti, um, also won his own team. We have um, Oladide um, losing his own team, um, his own um, his own game. But to summarize, all men's team were able to get the goal at the end of the day. So as I leave you with this wonderful moment, I say thank you for being part of today's program. We'll say a big thank you for being with us. If you want to join us, you can join us on all our social media platforms to hear the latest updates in the world of sport. For me to you, enjoy the beginning of a wonderful weekend.